<laughs> Streams in the desert today is a blessing. You know, I'm sitting here and it's amazing to me. I I have this new we call it a house because it doesn't feel like an apartment. It feels like a home. It feels like a, a house. And it almost feels like a house God built. That God made it for us. Because when we moved in, it was like everything just seemed to flow and fit. And just go perfect. Like today, I'm sitting here on the porch. And I'm looking out over sunshine and rain. <laughs> I am so amazed while I watch squirrels running over telephone wires and in trees and I spread out and I plant things and I get the chance to see them grow and to enjoy really the goodness that God has given and I'm thankful you know it gives me a chance to even do more because it would be easy to sit back and say oh well you know let's just get our projects together and you know enjoy it for ourselves but I want to share it with you that's why I've, I've made a couple times an open invitation I've said hey come and visit you know we're going to soon start putting up the, the address you know or contact by email you know any way you want to get a hold of me just let me know come on over you'll see this is how we do it this is how we do it do it <laughs> No, but this is what we do. We share Jesus. You know, and it's just everyday life. Just enjoying the goodness that God has provided and watching and seeing how He wants to lead us. Because He'll take you through times of lesser and times of more. He'll take you and lift you up and set you down. But He'll bring you through it all with a better appreciation of knowing that if you let Him lead you and if you let Him guide you, he will abide with you and live in you so that irregardless of whether you have a lot or a little, you'll be able to say at the end of your life, of this physical life that we live, that you were blessed by God. That in some way you were able to look back and say, wow, God came to me like gentle falling rain in the summer sun. And you know, I'm sitting in the middle of winter and it's warm. I'm sitting here watching the rain and spring is coming. It's amazing to me how God can change and rearrange the seasons where people think they know what's going to happen. Where God just wanted to bless me. And I take it personal. <laughs> I feel spoiled. I'm encouraged. I'm blessed. The hill country shall be thine. Joshua 17:18. There's always room higher up. When the valleys are full of Canaanites, whose iron chariots withstand your progress, get up into the hills. Occupy the upper spaces. If you can no longer work for God, pray for those who can. If you cannot move earth by your speech, you may move heaven. If the development of life on the lower slopes is impossible through limitations of service, the necessity of maintaining others and such like restrictions, then let it break out toward the unseen, the eternal, the divine. Faith can fell for us. Even if the tribes of Israel had realized what treasures lay above them, they would hardly have dared to suppose it possible to rid the, rid the hills of their dense forest growth. But as God indicated their task and told them to do it, he reminded them that they had power enough. The vision of things that seem impossible are presented to us, like these forest-covered steps, not to mock us, but to incite us to spiritual exploits which would be impossible unless God had stored within us the great strength of his own indwelling. Difficulty is sent to reveal to us what God can do in answer to the faith that prays and works. Are you straightened or challenged in the valleys? Get away to the hills. Live there. Get honey out of the rock and wealth out of the terrace slopes now hidden by the forest. In every location, 
wherever I've moved and in every place that I've gone, God has always done just like that, given me honey out of the rock, out of the very things that would seem the least likely to provide a blessing, I have found encouragement, hope, and strength. Most of the time, it required me not to look at the things that were on the outward, but to wait and see how God would reveal it to me as I moved forward in what looked like the impossible. When I wanted to go to Israel, I had prayed and said, God, you know, I'm in Oregon. <laughs> I'm not making any money. <laughs> and I just don't see anything happening here, you know. I'm, I want to go to Israel. I'm, I heard that this pastor there needs help. and I would rather go to Israel than to, you know, look around and see the things that here are not accomplishing what I thought they would. And the ministry had gone on, you know, the church that I was participating in, it kind of went off tangents and split and done weird things. So I said, you know, I want to go to Israel. So I prayed. And I said, Lord, I need a job to save up all the money I can to go to Israel. So I moved into a tent for the summer while I worked to save all the money that I could make working in potato fields. And so I worked as a potato truck driver. Then I worked, you know, kind of working the, the sorter, you know. And then when we were putting it in the, the sheds, you know, I helped sort there, and, you know, put them in. And worked the entire season. Saved up the checks. And when I got done, I had just enough to fly there. I didn't have enough to fly back. <laughs> so I flew to Israel. When I got there, I had to get a job. So I wound up getting a job, and I wound up living there for 14 months. Little did I know, when I started what I was going to do, how God would provide for me as He saw me through my time in Israel. I loved it. There was blessings, there was challenges, there was things that drove me nuts, there was things that were exciting, there were things that were wonderful. But in all of it, I have that experience now to look back on that I lived through and still maintained my relationship with God in. And I think that's what you and I should recognize about what happens in life. Is that the sun will come, it will come in its season, it will come in its time, it rises every day and it sets. The rains will fall, life will go on, there will still be harvest times, there will still be times of plenty, there'll still be times of need. Kind of like when people say the stock market will crash. No, it may fall, it may fall apart, but there's been stock markets for hundreds of years. Before America was a nation, there was a stock market. <laughs> you didn't know that, did you? They even had, like in France, part of the whole idea of the flags and semaphore was so that they could pass on the prices of what was going on in France over to England and across the country. Amazing. Stock market's been around that long, hasn't it? Funny how commerce still goes on. So, whenever you hear these things about how people are so terrified of like some silly thing that you think's going in, just remember that God created the heavens and the earth. He made the universe. And he paid attention when he made you, writing your name in his book of life, causing you to go to certain places knowing that you were going to choose certain things and do things in a certain way that only you would do it that way. So he planned out your footsteps. He coordinated the circumstances to cause you to come to him in a personal and intimate way. Now, I can tell you that just like storm clouds on the horizon. You can either see them as, oh no, a storm is coming, or an opportunity to see what God may bring for you. Because there's two ways of treating being in the rain when a storm hits. You could either be unprepared and be out there getting soaked wet to the skin, or you could talk to God if you have fallen away and begin again by preparing 
for those things that He tells you are going to come into your life. Because some of them you know. You, you made your bed, so to speak, and you're going to sleep in it because you're going to suffer the consequences of your own actions. We all do. I have. But there will come a time where as you take your gradual footsteps closer and closer to God, He's going to bless your way because you're going to not go to the left and you're going to start to go to the right and you're going to hear him say to you, no, don't go that way. And you'll turn and you'll turn again and you'll turn again and you'll keep turning till you go straight on to where God wants you to be. Today, I am where God wants me to be. I am peaceful beyond measure. I am content with great joy. I am loved with an incredible amount of Now, to get here, I'll admit, I dropped 10 pounds in moving all this stuff here. <laughs> Literally 10 pounds, and it took a lot out of me. But praise the Lord, God's strength gave me the ability to move these things here and to accomplish that which He wanted done, so that little time was lost in between the ministry from one confined place where we were compressed in on every side and just no matter how we tried to share Jesus, everything just seemed to go wrong with what the landowner there wanted. But here, oh, I look around at containers getting ready to be planted for spring, porch that runs forever that way, get a chance to pray and to sing and to sit in a living room that's built for a Bible study. And I just sit back and I just go, Lord, what do you want? What do you want for me today, God? This is all so very good, but you know what, Father? I've been blessed, and I've been less. But today, I want to follow the best. So I just want what you want me to do today. I don't want to go any farther, and I don't want to go any less than what you've chosen for me to do. Maybe that's a prayer for you. Maybe... Maybe you need to think about that. Only going as far or as little as God wants you to go. Sometimes, some people run ahead of God. And then God has to tell them, wait for me. Don't be like that. If you're in that valley time, and you need to go to the mountain, then take some time. Sit back, kick back, relax, take a moment, pray, ask God to join you, and then be still. Go to wherever it is that you have a quiet place alone, not with people around, but alone. And remember it, to keep it always that way for you and Him. But then go be alone with God today. And instead of asking him what he wants you to do, maybe just listen to him for a while. Today, just listen.